Hi there. So it's been a while since I've done a battery video, so I thought it was about time I got around to doing another one. Uh, in my previous videos, I was looking to develop a gel electrolyte. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, seeing a couple of issues uh, on the electrodes with them getting uh, effectively corroded or dissolved within the electrolyte. So I was wondering if there was any way um, in order to try and prevent that or slow it down uh, to try and prolong the life of the cell. And I was doing a bit of Googling, as you normally do, and uh, came across a research paper, which uh, I'll stick in the description below. But it was looking about um, adding uh, glycerine or glycerol uh, to the solution to try and slow down the corrosion. Uh, I, th I think in the paper that they were uh, saying that they could get up to about an 85% reduction in the corrosion of copper um, by adding it to the uh, solution. So I thought, well, we'll give it a go and uh, see what it does. Uh, so I've been to the shop and uh, here in the UK, uh, we have a chemist called Boots and they sell this for about £1.50 a bottle. This is a 200ml um, bottle of uh, glycerine or glycerol. Um, and typically you would use this for uh, treating things like coughs and sore throats as it kind of coats the uh, as your throat as you take it. But um, yeah, I thought well, let's try it in a, in a battery setup. So in order to try and see whether it has any effect at all and also to try and see how it affects the performance, um, I've knocked up a few test cells which you can see here. So the first one here um, is just straight deionized water um, with one mole sodium chloride or uh, effectively sea salt. Uh, according to my calculations, and this is always where I get a bit confused, I think um, within 20 mils of water, one mole should be around 1.2 grams. So that's what I've stuck in here. Uh, the middle one, I've gone for like a 50-50 mix. Um, so I've got 10 mil of deionized water and 10 mil uh, glycerin. And again, it's one mole sodium chloride. And last but not least, uh, I've got uh, just pure glycerine in this. So uh, 20 mil of glycerine and one mole of sodium chloride. So yeah, what I'm going to do is um, do some initial power tests just to see how these are actually performing. Um, so I'll come back with those. And then probably what I'm going to do is uh, leave these lying around for a while and uh, see if there's any notable um, differences in the amount that the electrodes um, are going to be corroding. So, I mean, if it's going to work, then, you know, I'm expecting this one, which is just the water and the sodium chloride to um, obviously ha have the worst. And probably, you know, if the uh, research um, is correct, then probably this one should should probably be the best. And I guess this one will be somewhere in the middle. But, um, you yeah, know, time will tell. So we'll find out. So I've hooked these up to the multimeter and uh, took a few initial readings uh, with the cells as is. Um, so the first one, which I was pretty much expecting, uh, with just the water, um, had a voltage of uh, just over half a volt. And on a dead short, <coughs> it topped out about 1.6 milliamps. So nothing amazing there. Uh, second one, uh, which is like the 50-50 mix, um, that was, again, it was around one point. Uh, half a volt, but uh, <coughs> on a dead short it was only reading microamps, so it was about 185 microamps. And the last one with uh, just the glycerin um, performed uh, the worst, um, so that only came in at uh, uh, 0 0.34 volts and uh, registered a, a meager 2 microamp amps. Um, <coughs> I mean, what you do notice is that when you're trying to dissolve the salts, uh, in, in the glycerine, uh, the more concentrated it is, the harder it is. I think half the problem here is that um, there's still some salt at the bottom, which I've been trying to get dissolved. Um, microwaving uh, will help with that, but I'll probably have to give it a few blasts till that stuff is properly dissolved. But yeah, next thing to do is, uh, is to leave these sitting around. Um, so I'm going to come back in a day and uh, see what they're looking like. So it's been one day, um, just come back to review the state of the cells. 
Um, so I took a, another measurement just to see if there was any sort of changes in the power. Um, and pretty much all of them have dropped off. Uh, the first one, which was just the uh, water, uh, had dropped off only slightly. Um, the second one, which was pretty much a 50-50 mix of water and glycerin, um, again, that um, had a slight drop on the, doing a dead short. And uh, pretty much the third one, which didn't really have much power in the first place, um, was pretty much similar, but got virtually no um, power out of that one at all. Um, the state of the electrodes uh, were all pretty similar, so I can't honestly say that there was any notable change on any of them. So what I thought I'd do is actually start trying to charge these things up and then see if I can uh, force um, the uh, corrosion uh, to start and then I could take a look. Um, interestingly when I charged these up, um, I, the one with the water, I think I charged that one at about 1.8 volts. Uh, for about 10 minutes and that ran on a 10 milliamp load um, using the sort of data logger on the laptop uh, that ran for about uh, six or so minutes um, on the 10 milliamps before that cut out uh, about one nor uh, 0 0.1 volts <coughs> uh, the second one here the 50 50 mix um, I had to because obviously it's got the glycerine in it and that kind of inhibits the uh, conductivity of the electrolyte so that required a bit more of a charge to get it going so I had that charging at around 2.5 volts um, again for 10 minutes um, and the performance curve on here which I think this is the one that's on the screen um, adds to that very strange behavior again where it pretty much drops to zero in terms of voltage but then it has a bounce back but um, the average voltage was uh, much lower on this so it was running at about 0.3 of a volt um, before it cut out about 0.1 after two minutes the uh, one with the s just the water and the sea salt I think that was running at pretty much constant half a volt before that one uh, tailed off and yeah <clears throat> not a total surprise but the one which is just pure glycerin um, has got extremely low conductivity um, so couldn't get a charge out of that or anything um, so yeah, that's it for now really. Um, I think next steps I'm probably going to do is probably leave these for another day, come back to them uh, and I might sort of tip out the electrolytes because of this uh, strange yellow liquid that's formed inside and um, see what the state of the uh, aluminium electrode and the copper electrodes are. Uh, the strange thing I noticed is when you're actually charging these and it was a bit more notable on this middle one. Um, is that this kind of yellow liquid seems to emanate from the aluminium side so you see it's creeping slowly across I was originally thinking um, that that was maybe chlorine or some kind of chloride mixture but I would have thought that that would have started on the uh, copper side so on the positive side where it tends to form um, but weirdly um, so whatever this is I'm not entirely sure uh, it seems to come from the aluminium but yeah, uh, I have to sort of look into that a bit further. But yeah, I'll come back in another day and we'll see where we are from there. So this is day two of the experiment, uh, reviewing um, how the cells are doing. So I've given these a charge again, just to see uh, uh, what's happened to them by um, having them sitting around for a while. Uh, <clears throat> the first one with the water, um, the performance on that one seems to have dropped off considerably. So on the original 10 milliamp test, it ran for about six minutes and now we're only uh, rocking in at about two. So that's dropped off. Interestingly, the 50-50 um, the mix has actually increased. So the although the kind of voltage was only about 0.3 as it was the first time around, um, it well, did actually sustain um, it for about twice as long. So I think it was over four minutes as opposed to two. And uh, as last place um, <clears throat> was the one that's just glycerine. So, I mean, it's pretty conclusive, really, that it's um, just adding a salt um, to it on its own. Uh, the performance is really bad. And that's not totally expected because given it's, it's such a thick consistency and um, 
you know, I'm sure there's just problems with sort of ion mobility and, and that. The other thing I noticed is with the sea salt, it was um, really bad at, at dissolving. Um, so I actually tried magnesium chloride and that actually seems to uh, dissolve quite well in the glycerine. Um, so I originally chucked in a mole of that, which was probably about 1.9 grams for, for the 20 mil. Uh, tried giving it a charge and all sorts, but again, you know, I couldn't get any sort of power out of it at all. I then chucked in a shed load more magnesium chloride. Uh, you can see that it's, it's probably pretty saturated now. There's probably best part of five or six grams uh, in the cell, but um, no show. So yeah, that one's pretty much dead. Uh, yeah, so I think the last thing I wanted to do really before kind of giving up on this um, is actually just uh, pour out the contents of these and, uh, and have a look at the uh, state of the electrodes. Um, I was doing a little bit of research into this and was wondering what this kind of orangey yellow liquid is. And um, I'm thinking it's possibly something like um, aluminium chloride that's because um, it seems to be forming on the aluminium side um, and gradually kind of spreads across to the copper side. Um, and it looks like it normally goes yellow when you've got some contamination in there. So possibly things like iron. So it's possible that the foil I'm using obviously isn't uh, it's cheapo foil. So it's obviously not going to be that pure. So it's probably got some impurities which are leading to this rather unusual colour. Um, yeah, and the, the other thing to note um, is that when you are charging this, the it doesn't appear to be giving off much in the way of chlorine gas. So you don't kind of get that usual kind of smelly swimming pool chlorine stench that comes off these, um, which you can do um, if um, you try the combinations. I mean, for example, if you go for more of a, uh, a carbon cathode, then it seems to um, change the reaction quite significantly and you get quite a lot of chlorine being generated. But yeah, I'm going to pull the contents of these out and uh, we'll have a look at um, the state of the electrodes. So I've given these a rinse out and uh, we can go and take a look now at the state of the electrodes. Um, so this is the first one with the water. Um, it's probably quite... You can see in here that um, it does seem to be a bit of copper plating that's uh, gone on, but you can also see the state of the aluminium is looking rather um, kind of dark. Um, and particularly around the top, you can see. So I'm assuming that that's um, kind of had some sort of heavier kind of oxidization going on. Um, but th this was probably the most powerful of the cells. So probably given the fact that it was the water and wasn't being inhibited by the glycerin, Probably not a total surprise. The copper looks pretty good. I mean, it does have remnants of that kind of um, sort of yellowy sort of sludge liquid that was forming off the aluminium, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. I think you can already see here, if you look closely at the bottom, you can see that the copper has kind of dissolved already. <clears throat> if I move over to the next one. Um, yeah, I mean, a kind of similar story but in all honesty I think the aluminium is in slightly better shape although it's still kind of suffering from the level of corrosion um, and the copper again um, seems to be pretty good again it's just got some of the remnants of the uh, deposits on there and the best one uh, which is not a total surprise given the fact that it wasn't really working at all at a cell so I think there was no um, oxidation going on at all on the aluminium because obviously nothing was happening um, this looked pretty much um, as it did when it started so yeah I'm not really sure to be honest um, I mean what I'm probably going to do is um, add it into the um, glucomanum gel electrolyte that I've talked about in the previous videos and uh, um, I'm probably going to obviously not go for such high quantities as kind of 50-50 but maybe start adding um, maybe sort of 10, 20 percent, um, just to try and see how that affects the the performance and the um, longevity of the cell. So yeah, I think that's probably it for now. So yeah, not totally conclusive, but um, yeah, that's how it goes. Thanks for watching.